All right, here's uh, three questions. Uh, first one dealing with um, solving an equation, and the last two are about manipulating equations. So this one I need to solve for x. First thing that bothers me, fractions. Second thing that bothers me is the um, brackets there. So first thing I would do is get rid of the fractions. Then we'll deal with the brackets. We could, we could do the bracket thing first if we wanted to, um, but let's try and get rid of these uh, fractions. Now, uh, there's a fraction inside the bracket. We're going to disregard that for now because this whole thing is one term. And so I'm going to be able to multiply that thing by something, and then here's a term and here's a term. So there's three terms. Okay, so common denominator between 3 and 8 and 8 will be 24. So I'm going to multiply the 2 thirds, 7 eighths plus 4x. I'll multiply that whole thing by 24. Uh, minus, I'll multiply the 5 eighths by 24. And multiply the 3 eighths by 24. Okay, so on this first one, uh, um, I, all I have to do is figure out this part right there. So 24 times 2 divided by 3. I think that comes out to 16. So I'll have 16 and then 7 eighths plus 4x. Notice that that 24 only got multiplied by this. It didn't multiply by this other part because that's part of the same term. Okay, the next one, 24 times 5 divided by 8, I think is 15 is equal to 24 times 3 divided by 8, I think, is 9. There. Way fewer fractions, but I still have one fraction. But let's maybe now get rid of the brackets. So let's multiply this 16 through. So 16 times 7 eighths, or 16 times 7 divided by 8. Figure out what that is. I think it comes out to 14. 16 times 4x would be plus 64x. Minus 15 is equal to 9. There, now there's no fractions. I'm liking that. So let's, um, uh, let me see. Yeah, probably collect these two. So I'll have 64x, and then 14 take away 15 is a negative 1, is equal to 9. And then I'll add 1 to both sides. So I'll have 64x is equal to 10. And I'll continue on up here. So 64x is equal to 10. Divide both sides by 64. So I'll get x is equal to 10 over 64, which probably I can simplify. I think 2 will go into both of those. So 2 goes into 10, 5. And 2 goes into 64, 32 times. So x is equal to 5 over 32. That's a tough one. Uh, lots of things that you have to fight with with the fractions and the brackets. Okay, hopefully that helps. Now here's a couple of manipulating questions. So this question number 19 in section 1.2, I think, uh, is wanting you to solve for y. So I need to isolate y. So what I do is I look to see what terms I have, and I want to isolate the term that has the y in it. That means I need to get rid of this thing. And to get rid of it, since it's being added here, <coughs> is um, I'm going to subtract it. So I'll subtract Ax on this side. If I do it on that side, I have to subtract it on the right side as well. Here they'll cancel, so I'll be left with By is equal to C minus Ax. Okay, now all I want is a Y. I don't want a By, so I have to get rid of this B. Since it's being multiplied by Y, then I'm going to divide both sides by b. So divide this side, this side, and this side, or all the terms by b. So it'll be y is equal to c over b minus ax over b. Then um, you could leave it like that. I would mark that correct. But since they both have the same denominator, you could write it as c minus ax all over the same b. Both those answers would be correct. Right. Um, one last question with this one. Uh, ooh, fractions and brackets. Ah. Um, I need to solve this one for m. And m is right in the middle there, or it's in the middle of some brackets. So I need to get rid of everything else other than the m. 
the first thing I'd want to do is get rid of this three quarters. Like the three quarters to me there is looking bad. Uh, so I need to get rid of it. So <clears throat> an easy way to ri get rid of it, and it's one that uh, um, I guess we can do this a number of different ways, but there's a fraction there. So um, that's an easy way to get rid of the fraction is to multiply everything by four. Why don't we do that? Now notice that this is one term because that it, it's three quarters times m plus five. That's all one term, and c is a term by itself too. So I'm going to multiply the this this by four, and I'm going to multiply this whole thing by four. So on the left side it'll turn out to be four c. <coughs> on the right side, four times three is twelve. Divide four is three. So this stuff cancels to be a three, and then m plus five. Notice that 4, I only multiply it by that factor that's out front there. Okay, now, uh, why don't we multiply the 3 in, use the distributive property. Again, there's multiple ways you could do this, but this to me makes a bit of sense. Okay, I want to get that <coughs> the m by itself, so let's lose this 15 here. So I'll subtract 15 here. If I do it there, i got to do it on the left side. So I'll have 4c minus 15 is equal to 3m. I'm real close. Last thing, what do you think you have to do? Exactly. So I'll divide this side by 3 and divide this side by 3. So m will come out to being 4c minus 15 all over 3. Sort of like the last question. You could leave it like that. I'm happy there. Or you could split that up and say 4c over 3 minus 15 over 3 is equal to m. Um, and I split it up there just because I saw that the 3 would go into 15. So I could write it as 4c over 3 minus 5 is equal to m. Writing it like this, 100%, if you wrote it like that, for me, that would be great too. All right, hopefully that helps you with those uh, three questions.